Hi everyone, my name is Alicia. Even as a child, I realized that dating boys just out of pure love is all nonsense. Because if you build a relationship just on love, nothing good will come out of it. One day you'll be dumped, and you'll realize that you've gained nothing but painful memories for your time. Well, that's how it was for me. That's how my first love ended. What was it like for you? How did you even know it was love? Also, at that moment, I made one important decision for me, which influenced my whole life later on. Date guys with money. At least that way you'll get something other than a pain in the neck. My boyfriend in my adulthood, named Rick, was a real jerk. No, he wasn't rich, but he could steal. I liked that adrenaline, bad guy with bad dates, but he always had the money for my whims. Good food, good clothes, and a ride in his stolen car. That was our relationship. To be honest though, I didn't feel butterflies in my stomach with him. It was more down to earth. And then one day, while I was waiting in his car at the gas station, he was robbed and the police busted him. I had to run out of there so I wouldn't get caught as an accomplice too. I went to a cell later and promised to help get him out. Then Rick said his bail was too high. Why? Did you do something else besides the usual theft? Yeah, there was something... lightweed. Nothing else, honestly. You're doing it again, aren't you? You promised me you'd cut it out! I did it for you! You love money, it was all for you! Alright, I'll try and get the bail money, but I need time. I have an idea. What is it? Rick told me that he had known a very rich woman recently. They had met by chance. He had done a couple of dirty jobs for her and was now aware that she needed help from a young, beautiful girl. The point was that I needed to hook up with her and date her son for money. Yeah, rich people have their quirks. Rick didn't mind, and I needed the money, especially since the pay was good. So I set it up. I met her, supposedly by chance, at a vegetable stand. And I knew the manners of a well-mannered girl, so I got her sympathy right away. She almost fell with full bags on the ground and I helped her carry everything to the car. After, she decided to thank me and invited me straight to her house for tea, where we got to talking and she made me an offer that I did not dare refuse. Mrs. Tabak said she would pay me a round sum of money to go out with her son and talk him into doing something. Plus, I was guaranteed lodging in their house, meals, a car, and servants. Who wouldn't agree to that, especially since I had nowhere else to live? They got me ready, I walked into the room, and I saw the disabled guy in the chair in front of me. This guy had nothing working below his chest, so to speak. Only his head and part of his arms moved. Man, I wasn't prepared for that, but okay. I liked his face. Of course, Henry took me at face value. He knew his mother, and he knew why I was there. He wouldn't talk to me, he shut himself off, and he wouldn't listen to anything I said. But money was more important, so I didn't back down. One day when I went into his room, he was sitting watching an action movie. John Wick. Have you ever seen it? I sat down quietly next to him and started watching with him. Henry asked, Siri, through voice control to press pause. Why did you come here? I love this movie. My mother sent you, and though I don't know your taste, I know her. And this kind of movie is definitely out of your league. You don't even know who John Wick is. It sounded like a challenge, so I grabbed his shirt and pulled him toward me, then leaned against his forehead and said menacingly, John Wick is no boogeyman. He's the one they sent to kill that fucking boogeyman. Then I let him go and went out for coffee. A couple of minutes later, Henry came into the kitchen in his chair. I sat reading a book, my favorite, Life by Guy de Maupassant, pretending it was nothing, even though I knew for sure I'd made an impression. Henry approached me timidly, then asked what I was reading. I pretended not to hear him. He asked again, a third time, a fifth time, and I freaked out. Can't you see the title for yourself? Henry was taken aback, drove closer, and said, My eyesight is bad. The nurse didn't come. No one put lenses in. Don't expect pity from me. This book teaches that not everything in life is easy. Life is what it is, and everyone survives and lives differently. I wasn't complaining. Of course, your looks alone are worth it. At least you have money, and people like me have to work to survive. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We might starve to death, whereas you at least have some security. 
Do you really think so? You have no idea what it's like to live an incomplete life. Alicia, every morning I wake up hoping I'm dead. Only the weak give up. Only idiots strive to survive. I got angry and smacked him across the face with a book. It was only later that I realized I'd overreacted. <gasps> Henry didn't say anything. He just smiled. I'm sorry. Look, I lost my temper. His remarks were close to what my father used to say when my mother was dying. He left the family as soon as he found out she could no longer be saved. He thought there was no point in surviving, so he said. I shared the story with Henry and he sympathized and then suggested we go for a walk. We went out into the garden where he told me about his first love, about his illness, after which he was now living like this. Then I got a call from a number I didn't know. I stepped away and it was Rick asking about the money. I told him I'd taken an advance and I'd be there soon. I went to Rick's, made a large deposit, and the first thing he did was call someone about another shipment. We argued. I just got you out. Do you know at all that I have to work for two whole months now for this money? And now you want to do forbidden business again? Rick, are you out of your mind? I got so mad, I threw one last word. Then that was it. I wasn't going to get him out of there again. I went back to work. Henry was waiting for me there, and we had our first dinner together. Everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Why? You just seem a little sad. No, it's just survival issues. Let's just say I got a dog that got killed. A dog called Hope. Sad. You want me to stick a pencil in whoever did it? <laughs> I'm sorry, but you can't wipe your own ass. <gasps> oh. We laughed, but Henry understood my humor. It didn't take long for us to get close, and it was hilarious. I had never had a conversation like that, about interests, movies, books, with anyone. The next day, we walked around a lot, ate and chatted. Then it rained, and Henry and I decided to watch a movie. Suddenly, Henry got sick. It was like he was writhing in pain. I was confused, but there was no caregiver for the second day, and Henry pointed me to a microphone on the shelf. I knew what to do. I unwrapped it and got the painkiller out of there, which made Henry feel better. He apologized, then told me that he sometimes has these attacks and that the only thing that helps is the narcotic he hides from his mother in this microphone. What kind of microphone is that? I used to sing. My father gave me this microphone when he was still alive. It has diamonds in it, is custom made, very expensive in every way, and also serves as my hiding place. I asked him why he didn't want to go with his mother to Israel for therapy, and Henry said that he didn't see the point in living like that, that he was living to survive, and he didn't like that. I strongly disagreed, took a stand, and said, I'll stab you with a pencil if you don't go, okay? I had to talk him down for days, but you know, in those moments I knew that I wasn't doing it for the money anymore. I really wanted him to live. And then one day, Henry and I went into town to pick out the fanciest dress for me on my birthday. He wanted to. On the way, we met Rick. He gave us this look, then said, Is that who you dumped me for? You're going to regret this, Alicia. I ignored him, but Rick got angry and grabbed me by the hair and dragged me a few feet. I screamed, and so did Henry, and he tried to fight Rick off with a chair, but he just laughed and walked away. I sat down on the floor and cried. Henry plopped down on the floor to pet me. I hugged him, and he said he wanted to heal and protect me. I didn't hold back my tears. I kissed him, and we told his mother. She was happy. Henry wanted me to go to Israel with him, and we started getting ready to depart. And his mother, Mrs. Tabak, came into the room. She was frightened. Behind her stood Rick, with a knife in his hands. No, let her go. I see you've got a good setup here. Let her go. Ah, uh, there he is, the hero lover. What, you're in love with him now? Did you know that your mother paid Alicia to go out with you? Yeah, thanks, by the way. Alicia bailed me out with that money, and they let me out. Except you stole my girlfriend, and I have to live on nothing because my girlfriend doesn't support me anymore, doesn't steal with me, you know? What's he talking about? Don't listen to him, he's just a jerk. Rick hit Henry's mother, and she fell down unconscious. He said he would leave if we gave him money, but we didn't have anything, and that's when he grabbed the diamond microphone. No, Rick, not that. Are you kidding? I'll take it. 
Henry had a fit. I attacked Rick, and he stabbed me and ran off. I had a bag in my hand, so I crawled over and helped him with the painkillers. I didn't wake up until I was in the hospital. What happened next? Rick went back to prison. I was treated. Henry forgave me, and we went to Israel. His mother didn't approve of our relationship, but we've put that off for later. Tell me guys, did you like my story? Write your opinion about it in the comments below the video. Don't forget to like it, share the video with your friends, and subscribe to the channel.